gosh, have you ever seen anything like that in your life? That was the most incredible view of the Milky Way I've ever seen. Oh, I need to turn the lights off, I want to see it again. I want to see it again. About a year ago, I got the best email of my life. Hey, you want to come and spend 10 days at our luxury, eco-friendly resort in the Maldives and lead stargazing sessions for guests at our private island observatory? And so here we are, 10 whole days in Suneva Jani. Now, beyond the obvious beauty of this place, seriously, can I just live here all the time? The reason why I'm so excited as an astronomer to visit the Maldives is because it's very nearly almost on the equator, about four degrees north in latitude. And that means you get the best of the northern and the southern skies. So the skies are really different to what I'm used to seeing in the UK. For example, the North Star Polaris is right down near the horizon here, and you really get a sense of the Earth's movement on its axis. Also, I found like when I look north, obviously I recognize everything. It's the sky I'm used to seeing. I can navigate my way around. And then I turn this way and I look south. I don't recognize a thing, like I'm so lost. Like there's a couple of things I recognize, you know, that rise high enough in the summer in the UK. But most stuff I'm just absolutely lost. I've started making up my own constellations because I don't know half of them, but like I see just triangles and like stegosauruses everywhere, like dinosaurs is all I see in the sky. The night skies here truly are some of the most incredible I've ever seen because we're so isolated on this tiny island in the middle of nowhere, so there's no light pollution. And one of the most amazing things about the villas is that the roof opens so that you can enjoy the stars from bed. Check this out. <laughs> that is an astronomer's absolute dream and it's luxuries like this that I could really get used to. And in case you're thinking, well that doesn't sound like work, this just sounds like a holiday. Don't worry, I've been doing some serious scientific experiments as well. Like testing the fact that gravity is weaker near the equator. Or determining the coefficient of friction between a swimsuit and a slide or investigating the effects of ultraviolet radiation on pasty pale skin that hasn't seen the sun in 18 months. In all seriousness though, this is why we're here. This is the very first overwater observatory in the world. And they have this incredible 16 inch mirror telescope with a zoom of 300 times. The view is spectacular. While I was here, I got to teach guests about the wonders of the night sky. I mean, I always say the sky becomes a lot more beautiful when you know what you're looking at. Like, for example, the center of the Milky Way. You know, this is the place in the sky where you see more stars because you're looking towards essentially the, the city center of our galaxy of over a hundred billion stars. And we also know that there's a supermassive black hole lurking in the middle of it all that's four million times more massive than the sun. As a black hole astrophysicist, that's what I care about, being able to look in the direction of the Milky Way's supermassive black hole is so cool. But for everybody else, it's the planets here that really shine. So because we're pretty much on the equator here and it's only a few weeks past equinox, the sun is rising directly in the east, going pretty much straight up overhead so that you have no shadow at midday, it's so weird. And then it sets directly in the west. Now that's also the path that all the other solar system objects take in the sky, like the planets as well, because the solar system is a flat plane, it's like a disk. And that's because the solar system was one day a big cloud of gas that also happened to be spinning. And just like when you take a ball of pizza dough and throw it above your head and set it spinning, it flattened out into a flat disk and then all the planets formed from there. And so what it means is that while I, in the UK, am used to seeing planets really low down in the sky, because that's also the path that the sun takes, here they go directly overhead. And Jupiter and Saturn right now are right at what we call the zenith, right above your head. And we have the best. It's amazing to get to experience different night skies from locations around the world. And what I love about traveling to see the night skies, especially one so clear like this, is the feeling it gives me. 
I know that some people can get very anxious or feel insignificant over the scales involved when you look up to the sky. But what I feel is hope. I feel limitless, like I could go anywhere or be anything. I feel so privileged to have experienced skies like this in such an incredible location this past week. Like I'm very aware that not a lot of people in life will get to experience what I have, especially in this amount of luxury as well as Suneva Jani, because I never thought I'd be able to afford it, especially on a research scientist salary as well, I'll tell you that for free. But it's thanks to people like you, watching my videos, engaging with content on my channel that I was even invited here in the first place. So a huge thank you from me to you just for being here. It's our last night tonight, so just soaking in the skies while I still can. And tomorrow, it'll be time to head back to the real world. Also, I found like a oh, moustache of hair. <laughs> Whoa! I might crash you, Sam. Uh, I'll move. I'll move. Uh, I'm out of the way. The, the, the other way. Oh, the other way. <laughs> There's the quote. Oh yeah. You stand on the glass as well. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's like Squid Game. <laughs> <laughs> that was the coolest thing. Can I? Can we get one? <laughs> <laughs> we need to build a tower in the garden to hide it in. <laughs> All right, next shed. The night skies here are truly some of the most incredible I've ever seen. Because we're so far away from light pollution, it's a tiny isolated island, right? It's our last night. I just watched that video back. Did I capture a shooting star in the background while I was filming? I was too busy filming that I missed a shooting star over there. Like, what the hell? Oh, who am I kidding? I'm not gonna get any science done, am I? I'm gonna have a load of emails. 917 emails in 10 days. <laughs> Are you freaking kidding me? 